Hey everyone, Flying Dutchie here and welcome to my Cossack 3 tutorial for complete beginners. I will explain the game uh, on a skirmish map and tell you what you need to know about this game and how to play it. Um, yeah, it will be on a random map here and we are going to play as the Netherlands. We are called Cossack and we are going to play against a very hard AI. Let's put this in here. Very hard. A random other civilization. These are all the civilizations in the game as you can play. All the civilizations have their own uh, bonuses and penalties really. Well, not always penalties, but mostly bonuses. Uh, for example, uh, the Netherlands that we are going to play uh, do have really good early musketeers. They shoot quicker. They do a little bit less damage, but they shoot a lot quicker. So uh, we are going to make use of that. Uh, we are going to play in a random season, we are going to play on a random map here, and on random map terrain. Uh, we will have low starting resources so that we can build up slowly. And we have poor minerals on the map, so we will not get as much gold and iron and coal. But I will explain that later when we are in the game. And we are going to play on a tiny map, so that we are close to the enemy. And the only thing I will start for the starting options is that I have a balloon, so that we can always check what the AI is doing. Normally, you cannot see this, and you need to discover it. Okay, let's jump into the game, and then I will explain how this game works. So, see you at the other end. Alright guys, and welcome into the game. I have paused the game. You can do this by pressing the minus key on your keyboard, and with the plus key you will uh, open the game and start it. That is why the game is a bit dark right now. Uh, this game is all about making armies with your barracks, your stables, your artillery depots, and etc. It's a bit like Age of Empires, I would say. It's an RTS. Uh, normally you cannot pass if you're going on multiplayer, but uh, single player we can. And we are going to take a look at all the things we need to do. So first of all, you see all these buttons over here. Uh, these are your uh, dwelling uh, limit. You get the dwellings by building dwellings, or also known as houses. They give 25 dwellings. And you can get it also by building your town halls this one and your barracks which is uh, this building also the 18th century barracks will give you uh, 250 dwellings the normal barracks give 150 and this way you can improve your uh, number and then you can make more units on the map at the start of the game this will not be a problem but the second build uh, thing is to select all our idle peasants these are my peasants at the start of the game and they build and they chop wood and they can mine stone and they can also uh, go in these mines that you see on the map. Now what are these things on the map here? This symbol is gold, that is a coal mine, and that is an iron mine. And that are the only places where you can build a mine. Uh, and that makes me uh, talk about all these resources in the game. So you have wood. Wood is cut in the forest and then you can store it at a storehouse or a town hall. Its wood is primarily used for building constructions. Then food. You can get only food in this game by uh, getting grain from a uh, mill field. You have to build a mill. Or by a building a, uh, a dock and then you can build fishing boats. Uh, stone is gathered by these stone patches over here. And they are also built for construction but also for maintenance for your stone walls and towers that you're going to make. Then we have gold. Uh, gold is primarily used to recruit and maintain mercenaries and perform upgrades. If you run out of gold and you have mercenary units, they will rebel and they will fight against everyone. So also against you. Then there's iron, also for uh, armored upgrades and it's also used for ammunition. Because we're going to shoot rifles and every time you shoot it costs maybe one iron or something. And the same counts for the coal. Coal is mostly used for uh, ammunition and some upgrades. Iron is used for uh, making units as well, more than coal. Now, that are all the resources in the game. Uh, here you can see the map. We can now also see who our opponent is. It is uh, Saxony. Okay, we're going to fight Saxony as the Netherlands. And the Dutch have their own uh, peasant look, as you can see. And the Saxons look like this. A bit more German. Okay, let's start building the mill. Now you just click on the mill here and you can see it's costing only 30 wood and 150 stone and it serves production and processing of grain cultures. The peasant can deliver harvested food to the mill so you don't need to build a storehouse for the mill. And it can be captured by the enemy and the mill adds upgrades making food production more efficient. And that is a very important thing to remember. 
because we are going to upgrade the mill instantly, very soon. Now let me take a look at the map here. Where should I build my town hall? I think I'm going to build my town hall close to the stone and the forest here, so that the, the peasants are a bit close. So I am going to build the mill over here. And I also need to build my town hall. Let's uh, select these units, just uh, left click for a box and select them. And they're going to build the town hall. Because town halls make peasants, so we get more workers. And they can deliver stone wood, food to the town hall. And we get more dwellings as well. It can be captured by the enemy if you don't protect it. Uh, after all buildings have been constructed, you can move to the next age in the town hall. We can go to the next uh, century. Now this is the Dutch town hall. And uh, let's put it a little bit over here. Because the peasants walk to the front of the town hall. But they want to bring stuff back. So we will uh, unpause the game and we are going to move and build the constructions. You can see that our food is going down. Because we are eating food over time. And that is why I built the mill instantly. Uh, of, of course remember we are on very low starting resources. That means that you also start with a low amount of food. If you run out of food people are going to die. Okay we have built the mill. And you can see that it's, uh, it's, it's making these fields around the mill right. These are the grain crops. Uh, Sometimes when you have no more grain crop field, you have to click this button and sow a new field. But you can prevent this with some technologies that we are going to research. And you can see here at the mill that we have an upgrade. It's uh, the improved grain crops treatment. We get 140% more harvesting. But the upgrade is costing 750 food. And 250 gold. Now we do have it right now. But the food will go down very much. But I always... Upgrade this instantly. So I click it. Now I have only 220 food. We will almost run out of food before we have our first uh, harvest. But the harvest that comes in is having 140% extra. And I, I think you should always upgrade your mill. Always. In every scenario. Now that is done. We are still trying to uh, work on the town hall. So let's send the rest of my patents to uh, build here as well. So right click on the town hall. They should go there now. I got a message. We are very low on food. Production of some humans is suspended. Yeah. When you go below a certain threshold of food. Uh, the game doesn't make more units. But that is really handy. So you never run out of food. By making. Uh, stuffs. Okay. There we go. The town hall has been built. Let's take a look at the town hall. So at the town hall. We can make more peasants. So we can get more workers. We have 18 workers now. You always want more workers. And uh, I will uh, give you a very handy thing. If you press control on your keyboard and left click on the peasants. They will get built infinite. And you want that. So just control click on the peasants. And then when we have more food. They will automatically getting uh, recruited. Also when you select this building. And you right click on the map. You can set a rally point. And if you put it on a tree. For example here. Then they will automatically go and chop wood. Now, there's another button here. That is the select all idle peasants button. That is also over here in the screen. And with this we can select all our uh, peasants that are not doing anything right now. Uh, yeah you can also see the stats from our peasants. They have an attack of 20. But they have no defense. Now since we have built the town hall. We can build more buildings now. Uh, we can now build the blacksmith. And you need the blacksmith to build the barracks, which will be your first military building. So we absolutely want to build uh, the, the blacksmith and the barracks as quickly as we can. But remember, we don't have food to make more units, so we don't have to rush it instantly. But still, you really want to build these buildings. So uh, we are going to build the blacksmith right now, I think. The blacksmith uh, has upgrades. It can also be captured by the enemy and you need it to build the barracks and the stables. So let's build a nice uh, blacksmith of the Dutch here. And you can see that I have select all my units. But there are still four, four idle. So only 14 units can make this building. So I'm going to click on the idle peasants here. Then we have our four idle peasants selected. And I'm going to build a storehouse. A storehouse is where they can bring the goods. So if I, put, if I put it over here, then they don't have to walk all the way to the town hall. They can also go to this storehouse over here. So I will let my peasants uh, build that one. There we 
There we go. You need the storehouse to build the market. There we go. The blacksmith has been built. Here you can see all the upgrades. Uh, and this is one of the upgrades that I mean that you need to uh, make sure that your fields are not getting depleted. That is the uh, manufacture agricultural equipment. It gives the fields 100% more yield, more capacity. It's costing 400 wood and 90 gold though, so we can't take this one instantly. This doesn't give you more food, but it just makes sure that the fields don't go uh, down that quickly. Now the other upgrades are for later. They are very expensive at the start of the game. Your buildings get more defense. Uh, your units can be recruited quicker with 32% quicker actually. But you can see we need a lot of coal, iron and gold. Uh, we get an upgrade for the 18th century uh, units. We have uh, the cavalry and swordsman. Sword clansman attack plus 5. So that is really good but it's very expensive. And this one is getting more armor for your soldiers. But also very expensive. These are uh, for the mid and late game. These upgrades. Except for the uh, field capacity one. Okay. The blacksmith has been built. Now we can build the uh, barracks. We need 100 wood. We have it. We have exactly enough stone. And we need 500 gold. So... We have just enough to build the barracks, and they can build infantry units, officers, and drummers. And we get 150 dwellings. Now, this is the Dutch uh, uh, barracks. I always like to build them a bit more front way to the enemy. So, uh, let's build the barracks over here. And let's continue the game. Okay, the storehouse has been built. This is the storehouse. So these four uh, settlers have nothing to do, are peasants in this game. So what will be the next goal? Now houses we don't need, because we already have uh, 100 uh, dwellings and we get 150. So we have 250 capacity soon, so we don't have to build a house. We have the mill already, we have the storehouse. Uh, we need a mine. We can only make more units when we are getting more gold and iron, so we have to build the mine at some point. So we need stone and wood for this. The cathedral is not very important, because it builds priests. You don't really need those at the start of the game. Uh, we cannot build a shipyard. We can only build the shipyard close to the, to the water, if we have a market. And the market is costing 450 wood as well. So we could just chop wood and build the market. Uh, a second barracks is costing 2500 gold, but very important to get. So we want to focus on the gold early on. And building a stable is also uh, costing a lot of wood. So we need a lot of wood and a little bit of stone for most of the buildings. So let's go and uh, chop some wood with uh, these four peasants. And let's put one of the peasants on the uh, stone. There we go. Just right click. Then you can see that we have three on the wood and one on the stone right now. And when these guys are ready, we are going to send them over here as well. Now you need to wait to, to make, make the fields grow, so you can see it's now green, so we cannot harvest them right now. But most likely we will just be in time to get our first food before we all gonna die. <laughs> there we go, there's the barracks, let's take a look. At the barracks you can make two units. A pikeman, which is costing 20 iron per, per time and food that we don't have. We are pretty good at the start of the game. And here are the special Dutch Musketeer units. They mostly cost food and a bit of gold and iron. Uh, they have a musket, they can fire at range. They do not fire when an enemy is up close, they would just run away. And they are very slow in production. So what I like to do is build both of these. And I just press Control click for both. And then uh, they will be made after each other. So one pikeman, one musket, one pikeman, one musket. That is what I like to do. Now you guys are ready. I think you guys can uh, go and do a little bit of uh, wood chopping. And three of you can go on the stone. There we go. And now there is nothing we can do for a while until we get our food. And we need to make sure that we will uh, put our uh, peasants back to the field here. When the crops are ready. Uh, this is the second stage. There are two stages to go. Oh yeah, and I'll also click on the barracks and press right click to make a rally point. For all the units to go there. 
Okay, the fields are almost ready. So I'm gonna select a couple of uh, these peasants that were just that just brought their goods back to the storehouse. I'm gonna bring six over here. And I bring them behind the mill, because they bring it at the back of the mill, their hulls. And I will uh, right click on the field when it's ready. It's almost ready. There we go. Now they can start harvesting the grain. And it will be just in time not to run out of food. And then we have a very nice upgrade. The next upgrade is only possible in the uh, 18th century, so that's going to take a very long time. But you can see we get 180% more harvesting, so that is a really cool upgrade. Now let's take a look what we are going to build next. I can build the market, because we have the wood. And, and we can't build... We could build another town hall, but that is just rushing. And that takes a very long time, so I don't, I don't think that's a good idea. Hmm, what will I build next? We can also build the academy. The academy gives uh, all kinds of upgrades to your set, to your city. Maybe we should get the market. Well, no, I'm just not going to build anything for a little bit. And there we go. Look, they are bringing the food. They bring like uh, more than 100 each. Uh, now we are above 400, and you can see that the peasants are going to start getting recruited, including my military units. Now, there's our first pikeman. Pikeman is having an 8 attack, 8 spear attack, and these are their defensive stats against swords, pikes, bullets, arrows, cannonballs, and grape shot cannons. And this is the Dutch uh, musketeer. They have a, a uh, firepower of 10, and they have no defensive stats at all. Yeah, we absolutely want to uh, build them at the same time. And we can see that our gold is getting depleted. And that means that we can't make more units. So we have to build a gold mine. That is the first thing we need to do. Uh, you can select all your peasants. Click on the mine. It's costing only 100 and 100. And then you can go to your gold mine. We have one over here and we have one over here. Do we have more mines on the other side of the map? Ew. Just a empty field over here. So the only mines are close to our... Oh, there is some over here. Apparently. Okay, so there is... Oh, and we can fight for that gold mine, I guess, in the middle of the map. Okay. Now, we're gonna build gold, because we need gold to make more units. So we select all our peasants. And we build the gold mine. Now what will happen is the following. Only five peasants of all your selected peasants are going to walk towards the mine. Because a mine can only fit five peasants at the same time. You need to upgrade your mine if you want to get more people in. And there we go. And when the mine is built they will automatically add gold and then we can start making more units again. Now, we also need iron. We need 20 iron for the pikemans and 4 iron for the muskets. And we need iron and coal to fire the muskets. So we have to build our iron mine next as well. So I think that will be the next thing to do. At the start of the game you want gold and iron. Oh, this one is pretty safe, it's back at the back of our base, so... The next mine will be this one. But we also need to make... Uh, resources. Now our food is going very well. We are uh, accumulating some food. There we go. We are having now five people in the mine. And you can see how quickly the gold goes up. And I guess it's time for the iron mine here. Because soon we are running out of iron. And then we can't make more troops. So these five are now in the mine, there are a maximum of five inside, and we can upgrade it with plus five, but it's costing gold to upgrade all the mines, so... You always want to first upgrade your gold mines. Now I could build a market so that we can exchange our goods at the market. 
because my unit production will no, will no longer stop. This will just continue until the end of the game. Hmm. Yeah, that's going to take a long time to get the gold for the next uh, barracks, but it's very important. Hmm. Not sure. Still getting more people. Uh... Let's put more people on the stone. I right click on the stone, but the cross is behind the stone, so you can't see it. But uh... let's get a couple more on the stone here. You know what? Let's just build the market, I think. Oh, and the mine has been built. They're going into the mine. And we are getting our iron now going up automatically. Here, we could build the academy. That could also be a good thing. This is the research center. I mean, we can almost build the stables. Let's go build a stable. Just need to wait until we have the gold, and then we're gonna build a stable. Getting a second town hall, of course, uh, scales your economy as well. We just need more stone, and then we can build a town hall. I guess I'm gonna build the stables, which is uh, now. This is the Dutch uh, stables, let's build it over here. And let's put a rally point forward. And then I think I'm just gonna go for another town hall. Now, building a stable takes a very long time, as you can see here. And I think peasants can haul more stone at the same time than wood. I think per haul you get 40 stone and 30 wood or something. Yeah, you get 40 stone. Let's see how much wood we get when someone brings it. It is 28 or something. So yeah, you need way more on the wood than on stone. Let's take a look at uh, the Saxons. This is the Saxon uh, barracks. They are making pikemen only. They have a gold and iron mine as well. And they have built the market. And this is the Saxon uh, town hall. It's beautiful. So yeah, we could build our market. Maybe we should. We should also just go and uh, build the next gold mine. Let's go to the gold field here. There we go. There we go. The stable is almost built. And now we are wasting time with my peasants not getting resources because I'm building the stables. There we go. In the 17th century, you can build a writer, which is costing 120 food, 10 gold and 40 iron. It's a heavy horseman armed with a sword, wears armor protecting from bullets and shrapnel, effective against both infantry and light cavalry. And we have the dragoon, that is a horseman that is armed with a musket so they can shoot. They cost uh, 90 food, so it's a bit, bit cheaper. It's costing way less gold and iron than uh, the Reiter. Uh, does not fire any enemies up close. Long range of fire, low rate of fire, very slow production time. So I think I'm going to go with the Reiter because we already have our shooting units with the Musketeers. And we cannot shoot too much without running out of coal and iron. So let's go with the Reiter. So let's control click on the Reiters. And they will get uh, built there. So now my peasants are idle. Um, I am going to send four of you building the market. Let's put the market over there. And the other six are going on the wood chopping duty. Now, you can also upgrade your your uh, your troops over, over, over here. Uh, for every upgrade you need food and gold most of the time. Um, they get an extra firepower. They can get an extra weapon attack. Or they get defense. 
you can see here as well. But defense on your musketeers is a bit of a waste in my opinion, because you're using musketeers to shoot and not to fight hand-on-hand -hand combat. You also want to protect your musketeers with your pikemen and your riders. So I never use the, uh, the defense for these ones, but I do upgrade them with the firepower. Because at the moment they have 10, and if I do one upgrade they go to 11, so it's 10% more power, which is a lot. And the same counts for the writers. We can also upgrade my writers with defense and attacks. Okay. Now we have built a lot of buildings already. You can build a second market, but why would you? Now, every time you want to build another one, it's getting more expensive, of course. Getting the second barracks is a, a really big priority. Uh, but let us first focus on the academy. Academy gives bonuses to harvesting as well. Uh, you can do upgrades to chop wood quicker and stone. And you can do three upgrades for your grain. So uh, it's very important that we're going to get it. And that is our first writer. Hello. 15 uh, spear attack, pike attack. So it's a really cool unit. Uh, my food is going a bit down. So the next peasants I will recruit will go and... Uh, Get some over here. Let's also get the field capacity upgrade. You can see that some of these fields are getting uh, depleted. And with this upgrade. 400 wood and some gold. They will not deplete that quickly. I will click on the grain crop. But nothing happens I think. There we go. Are you making a lot of units? Yeah they are making some units as well. Okay, they also have a coal mine. We don't have a coal mine yet, and we are uh, getting at the point that we are running out of... Well, that our iron is getting higher than our coal. So let's get a bit of uh, coal here. Now, we have upgraded our field, so they have double the capacity, so they don't go and deplete that quickly. And let's build our academy. Let's actually do it with these four, because they are already here. Uh, let's build the academy over here. There we go. So, the market. You can uh, trade all the goods to the other one. Uh, most the, the thing that is worth the most is uh, gold. For 100 gold you get uh, 439 food, 220 wood, 220 stone, 78 iron, 78 coal. So, uh, coal is uh, worth the most. Then stone and wood, and then food. So if we need something, we can trade all the resources if we want to. Okay, you guys are going to work on the academy. We have built the uh, academy, so now we can build the uh, artillery depot if we have enough resources. And we can make cannons. I'd love to build a shipyard so I can uh, build ship... Uh, ship uh, I mean uh, ships to fish uh, for... Uh, to fish fish for food. My goodness. Would love to get that one going. Uh, there's another thing you can do. You can select a pikeman and select only set use unit as a guard. And then click on a building to guard the buildings from being captured. Remember, if you have no units next to a capturable building and peasants, they can be captured by the enemy. By a raid attack. So you always want to put some guards. In my opinion. Around your capturable uh, buildings. Mines are capturable. I'm going to put one at all the. Uh, different mines that I created. And that one. There we go. Let's take a look at our situation. Because we are having a lot of gold right now. Anything we can build. Yeah, we can build the barracks very soon. Let's go for a second barracks when we have 2500 gold. We can double up our uh, unit recruiting. How expensive is the next table? It's costing a lot of wood. Okay. Oh, we should also put one uh, close to the academy. 
The Academy is also a capturable building. The barracks and the stables are not capturable. I think we have enough people on the food. Yeah, let's go back to uh, put it on the trees here. Oh, we can build the, the barracks. Let's pause the game a bit here. And let's build another barracks over here. And make the rally point over there with right click. Alright, that is all going. The ac academy is taking a long time to get built. As you can see. Let's put one on the stone. We have no more people uh, getting stone. Yeah, they have built their second barracks already. Uh-oh. But they have no stable, right? No. Makes sense, though. The Your horses are getting built very slowly. But they are quick, so... I'm actually going to make the rally point over here. Because we're going to build uh, the mines over here and then they will be protected. Okay, we have built the other barracks as well. And we are going to make both of these uh, things as well. If you press Ctrl A. Oh, never mind. Ctrl Z. You select... I forgot about that when I select Ctrl A and Ctrl Z. That my scenes are changing. So sorry about that. Um, so yeah, I can't really... Press those buttons, apparently. <laughs> I need to remind myself that I can't do that. If you double-click on the barracks, you will select everything in the neighborhood. And you can see that uh, they are both times two getting built infinitely. Oh, and my peasants are idle. Now, we could build a Dutch church over here. But we don't need priests at the start of the game at all. I almost never use them. We have an academy, we are having the second barracks. The third barracks is 12,500 gold, so that's going to take a long time. We would love to build a second stable, but then we need a lot of wood. Uh, we still want an artillery depot, but we need the academy and it's getting built. I guess you guys are going to make another mine. Okay, let's go to this iron mine over here. And then I will select a guard. There we go. And you guys are gonna move over here. Academy is uh, four fifths away to getting built. Very nice. There's one more coal mine I can get here, and then I think we have all the mines in our neighborhood. There is one coal, uh, gold mine over there. Oh, there is. Coal and iron over here. And one over there. We should get those as well. How many peasants do I have? Ten? Hmm. Let's wait a little bit longer. The mine has been constructed. Now we have 10 people working in the mine. We only have 5 coals. Uh, we should really get the next coal mine, I think. Let's build it in. Build it over here. And let's better put a guard over there. I'll just try to build a bit around my, uh, my mill field so it's a bit more protected. Because most of my peasants are over here, so I will build this full and over here. Right, so yeah, you can also build towers, you can build walls, but they cost upkeep. And there we go, we have built the academy. And these are all the upgrades in the academy. These gives harvesting upgrades. So we make more food out of the grain. This is the field capacity, so if I build this one, the grain fields will never get depleted anymore. Uh, you have some boat efficiencies, but they are pretty expensive. So you get more, uh, you get double the fish yields. And you can build a frigate with this uh, technology, a new ship. The fishing boat will be cheaper. 
Uh, this is the only woodcutting efficiency upgrade you can do, and I'm gonna do it uh, right now. Because we have the food and the gold. Uh, the woodcutting will be 100% more efficient. So I'm gonna click that one very soon. Now there are more upgrades for your buildings to make them better. Building construction, durability, more firepower upgrades. You wanna do this at the latest part of the game, because it's a percentage upgrade. If I do it now, I get less than when I have get all these upgrades, because these are a plus point to the base, and then the percentage go over that, over those points, so you want to do these at, at the latest part. And yeah, there are just more upgrades here as well. These are the upgrades for the stone. This one, we need 3000 iron, and this one, we need 12,500 gold. Then you get a huge amount of stone that you can trade away for other things. Uh, let's start actually with the uh, harvesting plus 40%. It's a really cheap upgrade. 200 wood and uh, 325 uh, gold. There we go. Then we get more food from the mill. And since we have built the academy, we can now build the artillery depot. Here we can make artillery. Let's go and make some artillery. There we go. It's a capturable building, so I sent a guard over there. These upgrades are pretty going pretty quickly. And the next upgrade will be uh, the woodcutting one. So we can get wood a lot quicker. And the enemy is coming our way, as you can see on the map. There we go, we have harvesting plus 40%, we get way more food. And we're gonna get the wood upgrade here. What is coming our way? They are sending their pikemans. Well, I will explain what these things are. These are drummers and officers. An officer is having, of course, a very high attack. And it requires gold for upkeep. And the drummer gives more vision. But if you put these two in, you can make a formation. And formations are stronger. So we are want to uh, recruit these things right now. Hopefully we can get these uh, before the enemy comes to us. And what I also will do is get a couple of upgrades for my pikeman. Uh, it's only costing 900 food and a bit of gold here. And let's make them fight a little bit better. Okay, they are making the drummers and the officers. And I'm going to use uh, this barracks to do the upgrades. There we go, the woodcutting efficiency is uh, there. 100% more woodcutting efficiency. Is there anything I want to upgrade right now? Uh, let's try to get this uh, this one, the 50% more food. But we also need to make more buildings. Would love to get the next stable. Or we get the shipyard. It takes a long time to build. Uh, we can also get the Diplomatic Center. Uh, here we can hire mercenaries for gold. But it's costing a lot of wood. I think I prefer to get the stables then. So we should fully focus on getting wood then. There we go. Everyone go on the wood. Now, let's get another upgrade for my uh, pikeman. We can get them a plus two attack with this upgrade. Let's go over it. There's a drummer, and that is the officer. Officer is really strong, 30, 30 attack uh, over there. And when you select your officer, you can make formations. A rank or column or square formation. Let's make a rank formation. And it goes with 36 to 72 to 120 to, to, to 196, I think. So we have only 36 ready to make a formation. Because we don't have, we don't have uh, 72. We do have 61 uh, muskets, so soon we will maybe have uh, enough muskets to make a formation with them as well. In a bigger one, 72 formation. But let's go with a 32 pikeman formation. Or 36, sorry. And then right click, and then you can send them forward. 
Because the enemy is almost there. Uh, they are running back again. They feel a little bit uh, not safe. Now you want to put your uh, shooting units behind your normal troops. They can shoot uh, through your own units. There is no uh, own hitting. Except for cannons, I think. Alright, we have a lot of wood suddenly because we have the upgrade. Yeah, let's just keep uh, going for another stable. We have built the artillery. At the start of the game you make, can make cannons. Spends a lot of coal and iron on firing. For every artillery depot you make, you can make 5 cannons, 5 howitzers, 10 mortars and 3 multi-barreled cannons. You have to research the multi-barreled cannons, but they are really good against uh, unarmored infantry. They just die instantly with one grape shot. And these are the howitzers. They are really good against uh, grouped up troops. It's a big cannonball that uh, comes in and then explodes and uh, go around. And you have the bombards. They can have a, they have a long range and they can uh, destroy the enemy buildings and the enemy towers. Mm. I'm not sure if I'm going to build any more cannons right now. Okay, we have built almost all the buildings. We did not build the house, but we don't need it because we have uh, 400 dwellings. We have built the mill. Storehouse, we have built the mine, we did not build the cathedral or the uh, shipyard yet. We have built the market, barracks, blacksmith, stables, arterial depot and academy. And we need the diplomatic center, so I guess I'm gonna start b working on my uh, my dock here. Now this sea doesn't connect to the enemy, so this will purely use for fishing. But let's start building it so we can show it off. And now we're going to go for uh, for the stables. We need a couple of people getting stone, by the way. That was not the case. Many people are here. Okay, let's make more mines. Let's get that coal mine. And uh, let's put a guard over there. And uh, let's get that iron mine as well. Yeah, we need stone. Oh, we have it. And iron mine, and let's get a guard there as well. And then there is one more g uh, gold mine over there. Maybe we should send our troops forward. Yeah, and claim that mine. Let's go forward. There we go. And I guess I will make my rally points there as well. I'm gonna push a bit on the enemy. There we go. Yeah, we need way more on the stone actually. Let's go and do this. Uh, the shipyard cannot be captured by the way. Hold your horses, please. Okay, I will end the episode here. In the next episode, we will continue our tutorial. And we will try to destroy the enemy. Um, I think we're going to succeed. Because I pass the game all the time. Hopefully you're enjoying this tutorial. And in the next part, we will finish it. And make sure to like and uh, share it with your friends. If you think it's a good one. And uh, give a reaction on the video. That really helps as well. And then I hopefully see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.